Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. In previous videos we've shown you how to replace axle brackets or suspension brackets, how to weld them up. We've also shown you what you need in the way of wire brushes and machinery tools so you can go ahead and clean up your suspension parts, especially the radius arms and uh, the tie rods on the rear axle. We've also shown you how to remove the bushes and to press them in. Obviously we don't show you everything we do, however we've been busy removing more bushes so we have some uh, nice shiny bushes in the radius arms and we went ahead and cleaned all this equipment up ready to paint. Aim of this video today is to show you or give you an insight into spray painting or painting with chassis paint so it makes the job much easier if you have a job lot to do. Here's the axle we previously repaired and welded on the uh, spring mounts and you can see it's been primed along with a lot more um, suspension components. This is Corollas that I've used and it's available from Arkwright Paints and we'll talk about that in a little while. Okay, I'll just point out here that if you happen to be uh, painting an axle and you prime the bare metal parts and you overlap the paintwork that is already on the axle that you haven't removed, for instance, Especially with a paintbrush, you will leave paintbrush marks all over it, which will show up underneath the top coat. It's always good to key this back and feather it so you get a good finish. However, I'm going to leave it for this tutorial. Okay, so Corollas, this primer or this rust inhibitor is a very good ground base for painting metal that still has rust on it. Okay, we cleaned it off, however, there will be rust that could burst through. This Corollas has a 30 year reputation for rust stabilization and control, so we're going to trust it. Also, we're going to do our chassis in this once it's been cleaned off. This will stop any rust growing back through underneath the top coat. So basically, Corolla sold by Arkwright. If you go on the website, there's links below, you'll see that it is actually quite cheap compared to other suppliers and you read the review and this will tell you roughly what it will cover. Okay, so Arkwright have been generous enough to give us a, a discount code of 10%, which is this on the screen when you go to buy their products. This will be covering Corolla's products. And we're going to also use anti-corrosive chassis paint, and it says any colour here, but we're using a DAF grey that's made up for us. Just to put a little thought in your mind, the chassis is not just exclusive to the Land Rover. So the paint products you see here are also used in heavy duty applications in other parts of the automotive industry. We also have uh, some components here that have been painted in RF16 or some people know as CIO, chassis in one from Buzzworld. And we've got some other steering components. I'm not going to paint these at the moment because we need to do some more treatments on them. I'll show you that in a later video. Okay, generally, as a rule of thumb, old paint is not good paint. Now, this paint is actually over 10 years old, and it's I've used it a couple of times. However, this has gone past its sell-by date. You should really get paint and use it. Don't keep it hanging around. This paint is about four or five weeks old, and it's good, so we'll be using the whole lot plus more. The thing here is this uh, chassis paint also is a brush paintable along with the Corollas, which probably sometimes is the best way of doing it. Now the Corollas we're using exclusively for everything that is underneath the bodywork. We don't need to paint aluminium with this. And this chassis paint did come up very well with brush painting, but you can just see the brush marks. It doesn't matter too much, it's underneath the vehicle and nobody's going to see it unless they go ahead and inspect your vehicle which with some of you I'm pretty sure that you do your own so it doesn't matter. Just to make sure you don't get any solvent blistering over the um, Corolla Cess, make sure it's dry before you paint the anti-corrosion chassis paint on and it's just as easy to brush it on or thin it down by 5%. Okay, if you know what you're looking for you can see that the finish on the first coat was actually matted out. That's because I couldn't get enough paint out of the gun. I thinned it down by 10% first of all, which I thought was good enough. However, it ended up the uh, second time round was 15% of thinners to paint. Now, this paint lays on very, very thickly. 
and it gives a very good coat. Now I'm using a 2mm spray nozzle, or fluid tip should I say, on the spray gun and this worked out to be very sufficient for the job. Now the frame I'm using is fairly rigid, however it is a little bit awkward to get to all the components. Now what I hate doing is hanging stuff, but I didn't have much of an option here. You can see as you spray, it actually moves about, which I don't like, but it was the only alternative that we had in this case to get everything hung and sprayed. Nevertheless, the finish on these components is fairly satisfactory. A good thing with painting chassis components, especially if you're a beginner, is that people will not see your mistakes. Now, spray painting, as I said, you can get in all the nooks and crannies, and this is sufficient to get a job done properly. Right then, let's have a chat about HVLP gravity-fed spray guns. Basically, they all look the same, and they have fluid tips, which are usually marked on the air cap. This one being a 1.4, this would be used for a fine panel spraying, for instance. This actual gun is an SIP gun, cost about £60, and, well, they're all the same. They look the same, it's just what you pay for them. However, there is a different breed, which is a low volume and low pressure, LVLP. Now, you don't need full CFMs of 13, this is more like 4.5 CFMs, to run this gun. It does paint slower because it doesn't deliver as much paint, but for a small compressor, this works very well. We'll have to have a look at that later. Some of them you can get with changeable fluid tips and air caps and needles. Basically, this is something you can do if you just want one gun to do many jobs. This one's a suction-fed spray gun, which is old hat now. Unless you're spraying huge amounts of paint in one go, these things are near enough obsolete and I don't use this and never have done, but it's the same technology. There are plenty of spray guns on the market, however there are good spray guns on the market. Now this is a Devilbiss, this happens to be a Pre-Pro which is a primer gun. The difference with a quality gun is you can buy all the parts. This is basically like a carburetor. Now there are gaskets and valves and needles etc that are in there and they can all be replaced. When you go for a different fluid tip you are only replacing one part rather than three. Now the problem with Devilbiss, a pre-pro, is you can only use it as a primer gun because this is the air cap for it. You can't fit any other. However, because the paint we're spraying is thick, we can get away with doing chassis paint. Okay, so if you've been to Lidl's or Audi's lately, you probably have bought a cheap £10 spray gun and the fluid tip will be 1.4, which will allow you to do panels, not paint a thick coats of paint. Now, it has the controls, it also has a cap on here, and just remember you need to pop that off before you start painting, otherwise you'll create a vacuum in the uh, reservoir. I'm not going to use this, it's got the wrong fitting on it, I just borrowed it to show you what it's about. Now, the problem here is it will show you an operating pressure, which is a 3 bar, if I can find it. It doesn't tell you how much CFM or um, cubic feet per minute, which isn't very good, because you need to know this with an HVLP gun. And just to make you aware that it is an HVLP gun, it will follow the same rules of high volume of air and low pressure. Now I'm just going to tell you this one again is made in the UK and we should be supporting UK companies shouldn't we so it's worth spending the money if you're going to take up painting. Always pay attention to technical details in this case the operating pressure is a two bar exactly now I've wound out the controls and what I'm looking for is a delivery of two bar constantly while I've got the trigger pulled full out now the air should come through and this pressure control should be wound right out. Now you can see it shuts it off, wound down, wound right out, and now I have to check to make sure that I've got two bar. Right, with paint, okay, now you really do need to strain it through a proper paint strainer, 190 microns in this case, and this will stop the gun jamming up or putting shit onto the work. We have some mixing cups and some thinners. The thinners is a number eight for this particular paint, and we have a stirrer as well. 
I would advise that you build your muscles up if you're going to uh, stir paint because it is a rather tedious job but you need the paint stirred very well so you get all the components mixed just right. Okay, so mixing cups do have percentages and they have millilitres shown so you can exactly measure out your thinners to paint proportions. Now in this case I put 300 in and then mixed 10% first of all which made it completely 330. I needed to put another 100 millilitres in to finish the job off. But however what I'll show you here is for 10% mix, a 300 up to the marker and then 10% will be an extra 30. So that will be 30 millilitres of number 8 or pure xylene um, thinners. So basically that's pour it up to the marker and then mix it really well again. Spray painting is resource wasteful because you're leaving paint in the mixing pots. Your mixing pots are disposable unless you get washable ones. And the filters as well are disposable of course. But what I'd advise here, if you're going to take a painting job on, then make sure you have enough to paint. You fill your whole pot, 600ml, and it's less wasteful. The other important resource you do need is a spray mask. Now this is suitable for 1K paint and don't paint without it because this stuff gets in your lungs is not nice. Basically ask if you don't know which mask to use and Arkwright have advisors which will help you out. Getting the right spray pattern basically is about 10 inches away from your work and you're looking for something that's elliptical. So a little bit of a test piece before you go ahead and spray is always worthwhile looking at. If you're wanting to learn basic painting techniques then I'd advise you have a look at some videos by Kevin Tetz which is Eastwood Paints. He's probably the best person to look at. You also have The Gunman who talks a lot about spraying and spray guns. These people you can learn from because they are painting all the time whereas I do HGV fitting and this is just a hobby for me. So basically what I've done here is shown you what I've done, how I've set myself up and what paints and equipment I've used. With professional painters they use a paint system which means they will use all of one company's products. This way you don't get problems with incompatibility with paints. This is one of the reasons we've gone for Arkwright paints because we can get the advice from them if we need to and they know what paints they're selling. Now I'm quite happy with the paint finish that I've got on here. As I'm saying before, with a beginner like myself, I wouldn't consider myself professional at all. This is a good practice before going on to panels. And you can see I've got a fairly good paint job out of this, although the preparation possibly could have been a lot better. If you look closely also at the video footage, you'll see that the angle of the gun and the distance between the workpiece isn't always constant. So what I'll show you is the end results of the uh, spray session that I've had. The chassis paint, which went on very thick, doesn't need any more coats. There's no runs and it's filled everywhere I've needed it to. Although I did actually miss a piece just here. Right, so I'll just remind you that any spray gun needs to be cleaned out after a painting session. Do never ever let the paint set in a gun. So using standard thinners, what we'll do is clean the insides, get rid of all the paint and then clean the outside as well so the gun's ready to use the next time round.